and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. Stephen. As we continue, uh, I'm going to invite uh, us to to scripture. Yeah, we're going to sing another song. In Christ alone. Why do they have not said? I don't know, Dan. Should I have him stand up again? This is, you know, we'll, thank you. Come on, sit up, stand up. Right. not necessarily what we do every week. You know this also that we just sang a song in Christ, a song to Christ alone. And the, 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 the words that are to follow from Scripture are kind of a confirmation of what we, uh, are, what we believe our church is about. Our church is about Jesus Christ. It is in Christ and Christ alone that we have our salvation. It is, it is in Christ we have been given a new identity. And so I invite you as we listen to the scriptures as, uh, as we read, that you would be encouraged to hear the message because in a real sense, this message that we're reading is who we are, who we choose to be in our identity with Christ. Today's first scripture reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 24 through 28. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. 
fast uh, several, um, a couple days, uh, I went up to my uh, brother's house up in uh, Cambridge, and uh, we began to wander through. Uh, Tim bought the home farm of my family, and so he's got all the treasures of the home farm hanging out in his house, and all the treasures that mom and dad didn't get dispersed before they died are hanging out in his house. And Tim decided that before I died, that he wanted to make sure that we got all that stuff out and gotten rid of. And, uh, and so it's amazing what you can find when you start opening doors you haven't been in for a long time. It's amazing the stuff that shows up. And for some, it's treasures. For others, it's junk. Well, I watched uh, the weekend and I discovered that some treasures uh, were considered not worthy of purchase and some junk, a lot of junk, got sold. Uh, and, but one of the things as I was, as I was going through the process uh, in, in doing this harvesting of stuff is how much stuff we collect. How much stuff we collect in our lives. And how much stuff uh, accumulate over the years. And as we got rid of stuff and as we, and we discovered that, that, you know, not that stuff wasn't bad, but it's just the fact that it was all that stuff. I'll tell you what, uh, we took more pressure washer stuff off of, off of, it was just sick with clean, uh, crud all over the place. I found, I found a tent that I haven't seen in 30 years in its container, sealed up in perfect mint condition. And as if I'm going to go tenting again. Uh, but maybe my kids will. But as, as we begin to look at, at, the, at, at, uh, at those treasures, I begin to think, if we were to open up the doors of our own spiritual journey, if we were to look at who we are, would we begin to find that there's a lot of stuff there? And maybe a lot of stuff in our, in our faith journeys that we haven't used for years? I'm just asking. Is it possible that we have, that we've moved on and we've left a lot of stuff residue in our past and have never processed it, never done anything with it? Let me suggest that, that one of the concerns that I have as your pastor, it, not for you any more than for myself, is that sometimes we accumulate stuff and we put it someplace to keep it safe or to keep it clean or to keep it in good shape and we don't use it. I've got a two-room tent, beautiful tent, that we bought 30 years ago to go to Sunshine in, in Wilmer, back then it was in Wilmer, a big Christian rock concert, we used it once, and I haven't seen it since. I wonder if maybe the problem is that we hang on to stuff that doesn't bring life, but rather collects dust. The passage of Scripture that I was just read is a passage that I, I think, one, it addresses two things. One, it addresses the fact that we need to make sure that all that we have and all that we are in our identity needs to have a focus. And that we begin to realize that sometimes some of the stuff we carry with us become cumbersome, they become dirty, they become unusable. One of the things that, that the book I was reading talked about is the fact that we live in a different world. And by the way, you know, I want to tell you this. Some of the stuff we carry ain't relevant to the people that we live in, that live in this world. And it isn't that the stuff isn't good. We did the Nicene Creed. There's solid stuff there. Good stuff there. But the problem is, if it isn't unpacked, if it just becomes stuff that we cling to, then maybe, just maybe, we need to let go of some of that stuff and begin, or take the stuff out and begin to use it. And I believe that, uh, that 
Uh, the passage of scripture that was just read is a passage that introduces us to the fact that Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, the one who pursued man in spite of the fact that man decided to wander off in his own, that creator, that creator God, 2,000 years ago, and by the way, this is old stuff. You've all heard this before. But 2,000 years ago, came into this world and lived his life Even though we didn't deserve it, he lived his life with the purpose of death. He died so that we might be forgiven. And sometimes I wonder how much time do we spend in our lives reflecting on the greatest gift that God could have ever given to us was Jesus Christ. How many of us have packed that truth and put it in trunks and forgotten it. Oh yes, we know that Jesus died for our sins. Oh yes, we, commun- we do communion once a month. Oh yes. But what have we done with that truth? That truth is foundational. That truth is, is motivational. And I begin to think about the, 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 the passage as well. And, and it, it's, it talks about man... Uh, was created for a season and that God had a reason for us to be here to inhabit this earth and, and, and it says it says um, he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands he says he knows all the details of our lives but the question is what do we do with that? And do we find our source of strength and power in Christ? We've made the statement that our desire is to make for a mission statement that in Christ we live. L-I-V-E. And as I read this passage and as I read the last verse for in him we live and move and have our being And some of your poets will say, we are his offspring. We are sons and daughters of God. That's who we are. That's our new identity. And it's because of Christ we live. Because of Christ we move. Because of Christ we have our being. But I'll be honest with you. There are times when I forget the most important stuff. There are times when I get sidetracked with other stuff. And we need to be reminded that our purpose in life, our purpose in life is to serve Jesus Christ. I say that again, because this is bold and this is strong and this is and it's irrefutable from God's word. Our purpose in life is to serve Jesus Christ. We're going to read the other passage in a few moments, uh, another another uh, uh, word about that. But, but I want to just challenge this this morning and, and, and begin to ask yourself, have you gone through the stuff in your life? I can tell you some treasures we found. The people actually pay for the junk. But do we have stuff that encumbers us that isn't important? And then the other thing is, have we packed away the stuff that is important and become distant? Jesus Christ is at the core of our stuff. Is he the core of your stuff? As we continue together, I want to invite you to turn once again in your hymnals to uh, hymn number 391, verses 1 through 3. Oh, happy day.
I just want to uh, say, uh, I picked that song on purpose. And the reason why I picked that song is because, uh, because I, I sometimes wonder, is Jesus Christ the source of joy in our lives? We sing a beautiful old hymn. By the way, that hymn has got dust all over it because I don't think I've sung it since we've been here. But it's a beautiful song. But it's got a powerful message. And if we just sing the words, the message does not have any value. But the challenge is, as we read the words of that song, as we sing the words, Oh, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Listen, as we read the other passages, and by the way, she's going to read it uh, a bit differently than probably you'll see it above. It's going to be a few extra verses. Uh, but it's still found in the same area. Second Corinthians chapter 5. All right. Verses 14 through 21. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. I'm intrigued by the first verse that was read that talks about being compelled. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that the one who died for all and therefore uh, died for all and therefore all dead. Uh, it's a passage of scripture that's intriguing because how many, how many days you wake up a week going, boy, I'm compelled in the love of God to serve today. Can I just see the hands the last time anyone said that? I am compelled by the love of God to serve Him today. I read that verse and I kind of go, what is it that motivates us to do from day to day? I, 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 I went up to help my brother, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm getting old. I know, I know, that probably shocks you. You know what's really hard? is getting up once you're down. <laughs> Can you hear an amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it was a great time spending with my, with my brother. Uh, it was an interesting time spending with my brother because we have different perspectives on a lot of different stuff. And so as we were looking through stuff, we were discussing stuff, and... A lot of the stuff we discussed could be trashed, and a lot of the stuff we had could be trashed. Can you believe that people will actually spend money on old windows? I know, it's a huge thing. Who would have known? So we started pulling windows out of that barn like you wouldn't believe. There are hundreds of them in there. Um, and uh, not all of them sold, but... And would you believe that people will spend $200 to buy a crock? <laughs> and then there's always Halloween costumes. But as, as, I, as, as I begin to think about, about my experience this, this past couple of days, I begin to ask... What is it that really floats my boat spiritually? What is it really what is it really that motivates me to get up from day to day? 
There are days when I wake up and I'm not motivated to get up and do anything. There are days when I, and I've said a couple, two, three weeks ago, that I get up to preach and frankly, if I had my brothers, I would have rather crawl back into bed, put my head over the, over the blank, and probably somebody wished you would have. Stood up, but But one of the things that's changed for me over the years, I used to do ministry because I thought I was called by God to do ministry. I used to do ministry with the idea of being able to succeed and be able to do great things and be able to wow people with my words. found out that didn't work. But what has changed for me is that it used to be that I wanted to change the world. I wanted to demonstrate that I could be as good as my father was as a pastor. But the older I get, the less concerned I am about impressing you. And the more concerned I am about preaching to you over and over and over again, Jesus Christ. You see, we can be successful. I could be successful as a pastor if I if I wanted to be, and I can do a lot of great things, and there's a lot of pastors out there doing great things. But if everything I do isn't motivated by Jesus Christ, then it's wrongly motivated, and it's not worth, it's not worth the ground it sits on. Oh, sure, someone might take it out and sell it as, a, as retro or, or significant, uh, and some, but it isn't, it isn't real. And, and the same thing is true in relationship to our lives. If we can have all this stuff, we can have all the history, we can have all the, the right credentials, but if it isn't motivated by the right thing, it's only stuff. And people may be even impressed with how good your stuff looks, but if it's only stuff, if it isn't authentic, if it isn't real, what good is it? And we live our lives, working our lives to succeed so that we can retire. Some of us have retired. Others of us have been told very clearly by their wives that we're not retiring. But she says, that's okay, Dan. You only work one day a week, so you're okay. Um, but we live our lives trying to be focused on what we can accomplish and what we can do and how we can get this beautiful nest egg and, and all those type of things. But... Ultimately, when it's all said and done, none of that stuff will last. All those beautiful treasures that once were put into that barn to keep safe, all of them have become filled with dust, mothballs, and rot. Nothing we do on this world will last unless we begin to find out why we follow Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I came, I lived, I died, and I was resurrected so that I could make you new. New. That means he trashed the old and he put on the new. But so many of us live in the trash of the old and don't live in the new that we've been made in Christ. We've been made new. We have something to, to, to speak about. We have something to share about. We have a reason for living. If Jesus Christ isn't the reason for living, what is it? Oh, I want to die until my grandchildren grow up and get married? You're going to grow up and get married no matter what you do. But maybe the question isn't about whether I see my grandchildren grow up and get married. Maybe the question should more be, and where am I engaged as an ambassador in Christ to help them see Jesus Christ as Lord?
In Christ we live. Scripture says we have been made new, the oldest God. We are made new because we begin to realize the price that Christ paid to give us new life. And if the new has come and the old is gone, then what are we doing with that new that we've been given? Putting it in our bonds to store for a better day? By the way, reminiscing through the pages of my dad's life, we've got about 15 zillion uh, big file cabinets with his sermons. I've never pulled out one to read it. I heard it once, I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> I'll just leave that. I'm not going to go anywhere with that. But, but also, he had these books. I mean, my library is big, but my dad's library was huge. And as we begin to pull the books together to have them recycled, I begin to wander through some of those books that were so relevant years in the past. And today, today, the only value is that they get recycled. The only thing that lasts from the years of ministry that my dad has is the four boys that all have fallen in love with Jesus. God has called us to be ambassadors. He has called us to be new. He has called us to live a new message, to live a new life, and to share the glory of God's love and grace on the lives that we touch. So how are you doing? Where does Je Jesus fit into the, into the network of the stuff of your life? Let's pray. We just sang a few moments ago, Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. Because I need to ask, is Jesus that important to me? Do I celebrate the gift of forgiveness that I've been given? And if I celebrate the gift that was given to me, that becoming a new creation, what am I doing with that new created one that God gave, God made? Lord, I pray that all of us will wrestle with filing through the stuff of our lives and finding out what really matters. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your Son who came to give us life. May I live that out in my life. May we live that out in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, in the process last week of doing something, I can't remember what it was, we were discussing songs that people liked. And um, I, we're going to end this morning with the song, Lord of the Dance. Oh, we've got to do offering. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to do offering. But we're going to do it really quick, because otherwise I could almost have been on time if it wasn't for offering.